This video was created to help provide a better understanding of the thermal protective performance tests performed according to NFPA 1971. This test is used to evaluate how well firefighter gear is at protecting the wearer from burn injuries. This video will cover some common questions that are asked related to thermal protection. The first and most popular question asked is how hot is the flame that you use to test the material? Flame temperatures are variable and depend on the fuel source. By using thermal energy as we do in the TPP test, we are not only using a known fuel source, but we are also using a known amount. Another question that has come up relates to burn injuries, even when the TPP value would suggest that the wearer should have been protected. TPP is a good indicator of how the composite will perform compared to other composites and should not be used to evaluate real-life exposures. What do the TPP numbers mean and which composites are the best? This is highly dependent on the particular department practices and climate. When selecting a composite, it is important not to lose sight of the less obvious features, such as the durability of the individual layers. When selecting a composite, TPP should only be part of the consideration. There are over 1,000 available composites to choose from. Finding the right one should be based on more than a single number. In order to explain temperature versus thermal energy, here's a quick video from the UL Firefighter Safety Research Institute. They've done a great job of explaining why it's important to measure thermal energy instead of temperature when trying to compare composites. When firefighters think of a hazard on the fire ground, they think of temperature. How hot was it? When in reality, we need to think about how quickly the energy around you is transferred to you. Today we're going to talk about the difference between temperature and heat release rate and how it applies on today's modern fire grounds. Temperature is the average amount of energy contained in a substance. For example, ambient air is at about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Heat release rate is the amount of energy that comes off a burning object. To demonstrate that, we have two different candle setups to my right. The first candle releases about 60 watts of energy. We can relate this to a 60 watt light bulb as they release about the same amount of light. The temperature of this candle flame is somewhere between 1400 degrees and 1700 degrees, depending on where in the flame we are. As I touch the candle to the thermocouple, we notice the data system on my right reads the increase in temperature, which increases to about 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. When we triple the number of candles, we triple the energy release rate, or the heat release rate. Instead of being 60 watts, we're approximately 180 watts. However, we didn't necessarily change the temperature of the candle flame. We'll check with our thermocouple. We notice the data system increases to between 1500 and 1600 degrees Fahrenheit. We can talk about how this applies to your turnout gear. The more energy being released off of objects burning in the space, the more energy is transferred to your turnout gear. The turnout gear itself is designed to protect you by delaying the amount of energy your skin receives. The higher the heat release rate and the faster this energy transfer occurs. As energy is transferred through the turnout gear over time, there is the potential for you as a firefighter to receive a burn once enough energy has been transferred from the outer shell to the surface of your skin. Burn injuries not only come from the flame temperature, which is impacted by the fuel source, but the amount of flame present along with the time of exposure. This is what we're measuring when performing the thermal protective performance test. So how do we determine burn injury by measuring the thermal energy? The Stoll curve is the industry standard for measuring burn injury through clothing. It was developed by exposing a forearm to radiant heat until pain was experienced. If a blister formed, it was considered a second-degree burn. The limitation to the Stoll curve is that it can only predict burn injuries up to 30 seconds, meaning if you see any results that have a prediction of greater than 30 seconds, which is a TPP value of 60, that result has been extrapolated from the curve and isn't an actual comparison to the curve. 
The second line on this chart is the temperature rise. During the exposure, as the materials begin to break down from the heat and flame, the ability of the materials to continue offering protection decreases. As you can see, the line starts out with little transfer of heat, and then over time the materials burn and degrade, and the thermal energy through the materials increases exponentially until it crosses the stole curve line. This intersection is what we would call the burn injury. In this example, the second degree burn injury occurred at around 19 seconds. The TPP test is performed on every single composite used in the industry. There are almost 800 composites that are shared across the manufacturers of these garments. In addition to the nearly 800 shared composites, there are roughly 200 more composites that are tested specifically for particular garment manufacturers. This test consists of radiant quartz tubes and two convective meeker burners that are angled inward to converge flames directly below the testing specimen and directly above the radiant quartz tubes. These two heat sources are calibrated to provide a known thermal energy exposure. This type of exposure is similar to a flashover or complete flame engulfment. However, it is important to know that while it is similar to a flashover, it should never be related to an actual flashover. The TPP test is a standardized method with a set of known exposures and provides a way to test composites so that they can be compared to the performance of another. Here is a quick video to show you how the test is performed. The test is set up so that the flames and radiant tubes are placed below the sample composite. The sample composite is then flipped so that the outer layer is facing the flames and the inner layer is facing upward. On top of that sample composite is a heat flux calorimeter that measures the energy as it passes from the exposure area and through the sample. The sensor on the back of the composite calculates the thermal energy through that sample in order to predict a second degree burn as described earlier. The TPP value is calculated as the time that it takes to receive that second degree burn multiplied by the exposure. For example, a TPP value of 40 is equal to a burn injury time of 20 seconds multiplied by the two calorie exposure. When testing composites for thermal performance, higher TPP results mean that the thermal insulation is higher and the wearer is protected against heat exposure for longer periods of time. However, the more protective the garment is, the less ability the wearer has to assess the actual exposure. Your garment may be storing this heat and energy, which can then be dissipated to your skin when you least expect it. Alternative tests, such as the conductive and compressive heat resistance and stored energy tests, are used to determine the performance of the composite when it is in the compressed state. This is useful because when the thermal energy builds in your garment, you want to make sure that if it becomes compressed, that it won't transfer the heat to the wearer and cause a burn. As mentioned earlier, the TPP test should be used to compare composites. This test is performed using heat fluxes, exposure times, calibrated equipment, cut flat specimens, not full garments, and standardized samples. Since TPP is one of the most important numbers specified by buyers and wearers, it should be known that TPP doesn't actually give real-life results. Meaning a TPP of 40 doesn't necessarily mean that the full ensemble will actually protect a wearer against heat and flame for 20 seconds. Flashover fires are never the same and would very rarely actually match what is used during testing. Small differences between TPP values will be negligible in actual use due to the use of pocketing, reinforcements, patches, reflective trim, and other components. Also, the garment fit plays a major role in the transfer of energy. A tighter garment will reduce the air gap between the wearer and the fabrics, and this could increase the chances of heat transfer from that garment to the wearer. The more loose-fitting garment will allow some of that heat transfer to exit the material to the inside of the garment and perhaps not on the skin. Finally, remember that burn injuries can occur from direct contact with the flame, but can also occur through energy and heat transfer through their garment materials and is highly dependent on the layering of the garment and the heat energy present in the area. TPP provides a comparison between composites and is not performed to determine the amount of actual protection when wearing the garment. 
TPP should only be part of the consideration when choosing the right garments. There are many other tests with important values that should be considered when choosing materials. Thank you for your attention. We hope you found the information in this video valuable. Please feel free to contact your UL testing expert if you have additional questions.